Thank you, everyone, for coming. This is a particularly tricky topic. It is much easier to talk about buildings, and, and it has been quite reflective. And, and I'm hoping there is reward um, that comes out of it, which is probably after I get to sit down and after I've finished speaking. People, place, craft. The interaction between and the interweaving of these is my journey. My mum, dad, brother, two sisters, a cat and a dog, my people. I was the youngest, born at the Mata Hospital in Woolloongabba, where dad and mum both worked. Within a couple of weeks of being born, my people, with me, were back out on Moreton Bay rafting up to other boats. This was our Friday afternoon through till Sunday, generally pulling back into harbour as the sun was setting. These are my people and my place. This crafted timber boat from my childhood Makara inspires many of my projects. In that boat, I felt cradled, protected. But if I chose, I could open up to and be aware of the broader context around me. Three or four boats would raft together, each one acting as a room with a space in between. We would enjoy meals on one boat, play cards and sleep on another, and play in the water or the wrecks nearby. These times were socially rich and engaging with our surrounds. If it wasn't boats rafted together, we were camping, making camp. Everyone gets it. A protected ground made up of tents with gathering, fire, and cooking under an open sky. My childhood has informed what I see as opportunities for a dialogue with and between people, place, and craft. Mingled into the days of boating and camping of my early childhood, was time spent at my cousin's house, my dad's sister. This house was important to me. In subtle ways, it was teaching me about people, place, and craft on land. Judith and Rodney Chambers, my aunt and uncle. Rodney was an architect. He designed and built their home as an owner-builder. Building of the Chambers House was over a period of about four years, 1976 to 1979. After visiting, my dad would always query why their build was taking so long. Time was looked on as a negative, but I think crafted buildings and buildings that test ideas take time and the love afforded to them in that process stays within them. My memories of this place are clear of how we gathered or chatted up and down the split levels as kids running in and out of landscape, four years of making and how it was made, the stories of those that made it are still there to see and feel. It's set amongst the timber and tin homes of Inner Brisbane. This home is made of block and concrete, sitting on earth in landscape. To build on landscape, as opposed to above it, locates the Chambers House as progressive architecture. The indigenous lived with the ground through their social and ceremonial rituals. 
the first wave of migrants, the British, lived above the ground in their timber and tin Queenslanders. The second wave of migrants, who I think are equally important in the development of architecture in Brisbane, were the Italians and other Mediterranean regions that drew on their home living, homeland of living on the ground. The more you look at the housing stock around this peninsula, the more you realise that the housing stock of the early 1900s has been grounded through the addition of, from Italian migrants to this area, or the adaption of these houses by Italian migrants to this area. The Chambers House is more Italian in sitting, cutting, stepping, keeping in touch with the landscape. It is a masonry response. Concrete slab and concrete block. Materials that can hold back earth and hug the ground through the making of patios in the landscape. Detailing is sophisticated and rigorous. It is raw and honest. The expression of materials and craft. Its making is an important part of the building's story. It is the making through material and with hands. I am an architect. People, social interaction, connection within a house, with neighbours, between colleagues. Place, land underfoot or on water, sun, moon, prevailing breeze, storms, protection and sounds and smells, the things that most people forget about. Unfortunately, it normally gets taken back to just a view. And craft. And craft people. Something buildings had, and we, as architects, once were. Our hands shaped and left their print on materials. A story that is often connected to materials of the region and knowledge or craft from that region. But it requires craftspeople. I have become an architect, but I cannot build. Why did my university, my teachers, not give me these skills? I worked with local builders on timber houses, Queenslanders. I am a builder. I am approached because of past projects. Places we have made or because we have an understanding of whole process. The traditional role of lead craftsperson as designer. We get our hands dirty. Without making, I feel like we are playing at the edges, tinkering with spaces and finishes. I am a father. Me is now us. My people. People, place and craft. There have been a few places for my people. Crafted spaces for our daily rituals. Places for beautiful times and difficult times. Brook Street, 2002. This is not talking about architecture. This is a place I built and lived. 2002 to 2017. Owner, designer and builder. The materials are brick, concrete 
steel, timber and glass. We lived in and restored an 1887 Methodist church in the early years of my marriage and from 2004 till 2010 created a series of smaller, manageable projects that skirt the church. Structures grafted to the side of the church or structures a room away with walled courtyards between, creating a secure and green inner sanctum amidst the chaos of Fortitude Valley. Lachlan Nielsen and I built our home and office on a slender 5.6 metre patch of dirt between the church and church hall. Building a couple of days a week for two years, we bent and tied steel, we custom made windows and doors, each detail by us and made by our hands. Entr entrance to the home is subtle from the busy Brook Street. Through the threshold is a private and secure world for my people. A central open courtyard of green bathed in sunshine. The house wraps around on three sides with the church wall and stained glass windows forming the fourth wall. Walls of glass disappear at the edges, removing memory of enclosure. Upper level windows are push out timber flaps which act as eaves for the sun and protection for rain. There were more slides in here which were architectural, but I pulled my slides out to keep numbers down. I can't blame Furman. <laughs> we then made the cafe on Brook Street. This was our middle ground between family and a broader neighbourhood. Locke had been working with me for about five years and was ready to start his own practice. Lucas Hodgins came along. He was a tradesperson, a brickie that decided to study architecture. While running a practice, we were building the North Office, where the lane wrapped around the back of the church and this completed the village. This lane was actually just our driveway. We deliberately engaged with it and convinced our neighbours to do the same in the hope that it would take on the character of a lane, with people using it for thoroughfare and gathering on the edges. To my delight, Brisbane City Council turned up one day to install a street sign, Nardu Lane. It was a laneway that had been resumed by a developer 50 metres west of us. Brook Street was similar to a boat or camping. We had to be active participants, adjusting openings to suit changing weather and seasons. The spaces between secure, allowing engagement to occur. Engagement with landscape and with people. We had three of our four kids in this village. Wonderfully rich times. A setting that enabled enjoyment of daily rituals. Mostly wonderful. Occasionally difficult. When my son Lou was two, he fell from an open window of our home. The short drive to the Mater Hospital, where I was born, seemed long. Lou is now 14 years old, healthy, happy, and six foot three. This place always allowed its people to gather, to feel cradled and protected, or if desired, we could open up to and be aware of the broader context around us. Dornock Terrace. 
2011 to 2017. Owner, designer, and builder. Materials, timber, brick, glass, and steel. With the help of beautiful John Elway, we made the top floor habitable over a six-month period. The kids, Trish and myself, moved in. It took a further four years to strip back, restore, and adapt this squat into our home. The house was a squat with a long history of transient musicians and graffiti artists. The walls were covered in works by artists such as Soffels and Lister. On the final night before settlement, a huge party flowed out onto Doorknock Terrace, and the internal walls, with artwork, unfortunately, were smashed. Doorknock Terrace House sits high on a ridge in Highgate Hill. The block falls steeply to the north, allowing two storeys of home to tuck in under the more public office and guest space. Stairs on the west boundary makes arrival into a secured mid-level courtyard, a place for fires and entry into mid-level gathering and sleeping. Landscape stairs drop further past garden to living and meals. Gathering on the ground is open to a brick courtyard and bathhouse flanked by mature fig trees that frame views of Mount Kutha to the west and beautiful sunsets. Soffels kindly came back and painted a new work in the house, which now sits within the three-storey void that links the ground floor to sleeping on the mid-level and guest and office on the top floor above. A small village square, a place for people to engage. Trish and I separated while living at Doorknock. For about a year, we slept in separate rooms, loving and supporting our kids together, and doing our best to ensure our kids continue to love life with both of us. I think we were fortunate to have a place like Doorknock to give us time and space to work our relationships out while still gathering every night with our people. Boundary Street Office and Workshop. It started out as an old shop, one with a very long and difficult process. It's just down the road from Doorknock, and we made a place for designing and making. This is now our office and soon to be more making. Making of prototypes, fittings and fixtures. The hall. From about five years ago till present, and hopefully for a long time to come. Materials, timber, steel, and glass. As much as I loved Doorknock, I missed Brook Street. Brook Street is a place with life in and around it. I could always pitch myself there with my people. Now, in 10 years' time, with kids living or just visiting, 
and in old age with a coffee or glass of wine while playing backgammon in the cafe. So I bought a former Protestant hall beside the Marta Hospital back in Wollongabba. Restoration of the timber structure kept me busy for the first year. Replacing timber eaten by white ants, gap filling TNG boards, painting and adapting storerooms and a confessional into bedrooms for the kids, making this village for my family and guests is a work in progress. It started about four years ago, and hopefully it won't feel like a construction site by the end of this year. My sister's house shares a yard with the O'Briens. Kevin O'Brien studied architecture with me. We taught at DIT together while living in Ireland, and Kevin is godparent to my boy, Lou. Wednesday last week, the 1st of March, pinch and a punch, was a hard day for my people. My beautiful niece Louise passed away while hanging out in this yard. A yard shared with the O'Briens, a gathering ground for food and fires. Well, this time to say goodbye to Louise. We had a few hours to gather our people under the open sky and cry hug and let her go as the sun set. People, place and craft. Thank you. It's nice that you, you mentioned so many times people. Um, I guess being around people has been something crucial uh, that shaped you as the architect you are today. Um, when many of these projects have been lived by you, by the family, um, is this, the gatherings, something that you um, wish to your clients when they come for with a with an yes, project? Yes, I, I, I think I'm, I'm spoiled generally because clients come to us um, because of past projects and, and they don't expect it to, to be... I guess they expect conversations about how you live and how you engage. Um, I will bring you the glass, sorry, I forgot that. Yes. Continue. Uh, they expect conversations about engaging fairly meaningfully within households and with your neighbourhood. Um, so very rarely do we get clients that, that come to us and talk about for you or um, I guess things that, that I, I might see as not so important. Mm. Um, and if there's view there, that's fine, but as long as it comes secondary to um, how you come together as a group of people and, and how the place, place relates to hopefully the, the site that you've bought. Mm. And you mentioned time as something very important, the time it takes to create this page. What if uh, a client comes uh, to you with like, I would like to have it ready in two years I, from now? How do you uh, deal with uh, I, I, I think that can be possible and, and it affects, I guess, my thought process from very early days in terms of how it's built. Mm. Um, and it can be built from more simple materials, whether it be concrete block and G. James doors and windows. Mm. Um, so very standard product. But as long as it's, it's product that's still quite honest about what it's doing. Um, so I, I think you'll notice in, in those places, which are ones that I've done, um, there is no plasterboard anywhere. 
Um, it's, it's a product that, that I might have used um, quite a long time ago, but deliberately don't use because it takes away all craft, I think. Mm -hmm. It allows people on site to, to strip it back to... They become lazy. Um, so it becomes stock standard stud put together with a nail gun um, and no real thought about how it's made, but also it hides everything about how it's made. So those stories of the people that have, have invested their time and effort and the materials, which are incredibly valuable, mm. get lost, they get covered. Mm, that's true. If, um, if you allow me to change slightly the, the topic, you mentioned that you are an architect, you are a, a builder, mm -hmm. and you are also an owner, you have heard that, yes. and a carpenter. I yes. wonder how do you define yourself? Um, well, I, I, I'm, a re I'm a carpenter and a registered builder, um, and I think I've got to a point where I'd prefer not define myself so much. Mm. Um, I just enjoy being a part of the whole process, designing, building, even if I'm not the one that's building. Um, and enjoying the, the relationship and the interaction with the people that are, are going to be within that, that space. That's a good, a good decision to make of and course. to flow with, go with it. <laughs> um, one other question that they have, of course, you have four kids, and that must be a lot of fun, but also a lot of work at the same time. It's, I wonder it, if they have taught you something that you have been able to apply as an architect? Yes. Um, with, with four kids so far, the oldest one, Andy, is doing his second year of engineering. Um, Edie is in grade 12 and has talked about different design-related um, options for, for what she might do. Mm. Um, engineering, architecture, um, industrial design. And the, the two younger ones are, you know, Lou's just going through school, loving life, a bundle of hormones. and That's good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> just, he's just growing. Yeah. Um, and then Hen just follows along, just fourth, youngest, just cruising. But is something that you realize, oh, that, but, since I'm a father, but I is, realized it, I slightly it, changed something in it, being an architect? It is definitely a... a I guess a, a really relevant point because in terms of my practice I'd always seen it as James Russell architect and um, and I am changing or have just changed um, from James Russell architect to Russell with company which is about being less me and more broad in terms of design approach and making approach and family included. That sounds great. James, thank you a lot for your time and for your talk. Yeah. We'll catch thank up you. later with a roundtable discussion. Lovely. Thank you a thank lot. You. Thank you.